Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you some tips on working with directional prints such as plaid and stripes. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using McCall's 6649. So let's go ahead and get started. The most important part of working with a fabric like plaid is picking the right pattern. This is especially true if you're a beginner and this is your first time. You want to pick something that is a simple design. It doesn't have a lot of seams to it, it has a very simple design and it doesn't have a lot of curvy seams to it. You do want to pay attention to the suggested fabrics because sometimes it will give you a hint if it's not suitable for plaids or for stripes. If we look at this Vogue example here, it says unsuitable for obvious diagonals. So if it says unsuitable for directional prints or plaids, then I would stay away from that. The next part is choosing the fabric. Now, if you're a beginner, it's probably best to choose a simpler print. Now, this print is a little busy. There's a lot of lines going on. So maybe something on the simpler side, such as a gingham, a checkered, or a striped fabric would be best if it's your first time at matching prints. The next step is figuring out how much fabric you're going to need. Since we are matching prints, we wanna make sure that the stripes line up for seams that are going together, you need to get a little extra fabric. You can't necessarily go by what it says on the pattern envelope. A good rule of thumb is if it's a small print or plaid, you get a quarter to a half yard extra to what they suggest on the pattern. If it's more of a larger design, then you'll probably want to get a half yard to one yard extra. Also, when you're at the cutting table and you're laying out your fabric, you're going to want to take a good look at it, especially if it's a printed design, not a woven design. You need to look at it because sometimes at, when it's being manufactured, it might be printed slightly off grain. So if it looks crooked and it's supposed to be straight, just avoid it and pick out a different fabric. Before we cut out our fabric, we're gonna do a little bit of prep work to our pattern pieces. And you can see one of my pattern pieces here. The first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw this line at the seam line of any seams that I have in my pattern piece. We have the cut line here, and this of course includes the seam allowance. But we need to make sure that our stripes or our plaids match at the seam line, not at the cut line. This is especially true when you have curved seam such as the sleeve because it may match out here but then once you actually sew and you look at your seam it may no longer match so that's why it's important to know where this is so you can see I went ahead and I drew it up here I did a dash green line all the way around my pattern except for the hem allowance you don't really have to worry about the hem unless you're making a matching pantsuit or something like that and you want the top to match with the bottom the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my grain line arrow printed on the pattern, which is right here, and I'm going to extend it for the full length of the pattern. So here I go for the top, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom of that grain line arrow. The last thing I'm going to do for prepping is I'm going to look for the notches that are on either side of my grain line here. So I have a double notch here at the side seam, and I'm going to draw a line from this notch so that it's perpendicular to my grain line. So here's my grain line, and then I draw a line perpendicular to my notch. This is gonna help with the matching part. I also have one here at the armhole. I'm gonna do the same thing. Here's my grain line arrow, I draw a line out. And I have another one over on this side, the center front, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't just do it to the grain line, I even extend it, so that's fine. You can never have too many lines in this. Next, it's time to cut out our fabric pieces. Now for directional prints, I definitely recommend that you cut out on a single layer of fabric for each of your pieces. This means that you are not folding your fabric and cutting out two pieces at one time. It does take a little bit more time, but it also ensure that all your lines are going to match up perfectly. The thing you need to remember though, is if you do the system, you need to lay your piece out cut it out, if I need another one, I need to make sure that for the next one, I'm flipping the piece over. Obviously, you're gonna wanna line everything up so it's exactly the same, but you do need to make sure that you get two opposite pieces so you have one for each side of your body. The other important thing is, before you start pinning your fabric pieces or your pattern pieces to your fabric, you look at your print and you kind of make a decision on what is going to be your dominant vertical line and what's going to be the dominant 
horizontal line. So I'm not looking at all these lines, I'm just picking two lines that I'm gonna focus on and use to line up my pieces. So for me, I'm gonna use this vertical line, and you can see I have these all throughout my print, and then for the horizontal, I'm gonna use these little lines right here. Now we can start laying out our pieces. Now the difference is I'm not just laying all my pattern pieces out at the same time and then cutting them all at the same time. Instead, what I like to do is I take one piece, we're gonna say it's going to be my front piece here. I cut that out and then I cut out all the pieces around it to make sure that everything is going to match up. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to find a dominant line. We'll take this one that is going parallel to my salvage or with the grain line of what I need to cut out. I'm gonna line up the center front because this is a front piece, so the center front is gonna line up with this dominant line. If you don't know which one is the center front, it's always the opposite of the side seam area, or if you're doing a bodice where the armhole is. So it's gonna be the cut edge of the pattern. It's gonna line up just like this. Now, of course, if you're doing stripes, it's a little bit easier because you only have to line up one set of lines while we have this lined up, what we have to worry about is all the lines that are going in the opposite direction, making sure those line up with the other pieces. So the first one is easy. We just have to line up with the dominant line and it's fine. The only thing that you should consider is moving your pattern up and down to determine where these other lines are gonna fall. If I have a plaid that has huge, thick lines that are cutting across my pattern and they happen to cut across, let's say, the bust line area, that's gonna accentuate that area. So if you don't want to have those areas be obvious, then just shift your pattern up and down so you can kind of control where that big line is going to fall in your pattern. I have my one number piece already cut out, so now I need to get the opposite one that's gonna go on the other side. They get buttoned down the center here in the center front. So this is the important part that we need to match up. I'm going to flip this over and then you'll see I'm just trying to line it up. Again, I'm picking my dominant line here and then making sure that all these lines going this direction are also lining up. So I'm not only focusing on the center front line up here, I'm also looking down here as well. So I might take a little bit of adjusting. Now, if you pick something simple, like you picked a simple checkered print, it'd probably be a lot easier to actually line up, especially going this way, which for me is not as big of a deal as the lines that are going vertically. My print is just a little bit more complicating. So if you wanna keep it simple, line it up the best you can, go ahead and pin it and cut it out, and then you have your two pieces. If you're a little bit more particular, where these two pieces are gonna come together, you can check to see what that's gonna look like. So remember on my pattern when I created the seam line, I'm going to fold on that seam line and if you want, you can pin it into place and then you can kind of line it up and see how it's going to look when these two pieces come together. Sometimes you may get something like this where it's green that goes right into the red. And if you don't really like that, what you can do is just kind of move it up to where you kind of like them to come together. You like the look of it. I would pin all the way around, place this where you want it, and then just let out the seam allowance, pin it into place, and then go ahead and cut that out as well. With the front pieces finished, now we can start bringing in other pieces. So any pieces that are gonna be sewn together in a seam, you wanna try to make sure that your plaid is going to match. What I have here is the side seam of my front piece. And if I bring in my back piece and align up the side seam here, you can see that it matches pretty well. It has the same curve, it has the same double notch. The difference here is we do have a dart in the front. What we're gonna do is just match the plaid below the dart and then everything above, we're just gonna leave it alone because there's nothing we can really do to match that and it's under your arm anyways. So what I did first is I located the dominant lines that I have here and you can kind of see through my pattern and then I just marked them with a black marker. Again, I'm doing it at 
the seam line, so where I drew my original green line, not here at the cut line, because this is where it's going to match when it's all stitched together. So I drew a set of lines here on either side of my dominant line. I did one here, here. You can also use these notch marks if it lines up with something. Then I lay this on top of here and I redraw these lines. So now I could take it back to my fabric and then hopefully line everything up so when it's sewn together, it'll match. I make sure that I line up the center back of my back pattern with the horizontal dominant line again because we always do that for our pattern pieces just to make it easy. Then I line up my lines with my vertical dominant lines that you can see right here. So everything is lined up and I can go ahead and pin it into place. Now because this pattern for this particular example needs to be placed on the fold and I'm doing a single layer, what I need to do with this pattern is I need to draw an outline with some fabric chalk and I would just do the whole thing. Then I would take this, flip it over, this edge is going to again butt up with the line over here so it's the opposite. Again checking to make sure that these lines are again meeting up with our dominant lines and you can either trace it or just cut the whole thing because we need to make sure that we have our piece here for the back, one large piece that's twice the size of this pattern. Let's go over the sleeve, which I think is one of the more difficult aspects to match. Now sometimes it's difficult to match both the front and back of the sleeve with the front and back of the bodice. If you're having a hard time, concentrate on at least matching the front sleeve with the front bodice. It's better to at least be matching in the front than not matching at all. So here I have my sleeve pattern. You can see single notch means it's the front of the sleeve and that's gonna match with my front armhole of the bodice. And if I was to lay this on top of each other, so here's my pattern, here's my single notch right here. You can see at the start, it pretty much matches, but then my armhole comes up here and my sleeve pattern kind of curves this way. But if I was to manipulate one of them, let's say the front armhole, I can actually trace along the shape of the sleeve. And this is how the sleeve is going to fit in. I have a dominant line right here and I'm gonna mark that on my pattern piece. Then I lay them on top of each other and I can actually draw this onto my sleeve. Now you actually don't have to make the line this long because it will start to angle off because of the curves and everything like that. So you at least wanna have a little bit of a marking showing to show exactly where that dominant line is so now we can put it onto our fabric and try to match it. I drew a line right down the middle of my sleeve here and that's what I'm going to line up with a dominant line. So just like we did with the front bodice, we lined up the center front line, the back bodice we lined up the center back line, so now the center of the sleeve lines up with that. If you had something like a collar, a full collar, you do the center of the collar matching up with a dominant line. Just keeps things easy. So this is where I did my mark in order to mark the vertical dominant line. And you notice this line comes out straight, but this is kind of angled, it's because of the curve. So I just wanna make sure at least the first part of it does match where this stripe is going to be. So I'm just making sure that everything is straight. I also use my notches here to kind of line up and make sure that I pinned my sleeve straight. I'm gonna go ahead, cut it out, and then of course, since I need two of them, I'd have to flip it over to get an opposite sleeve as well. Let's say we're ready to sew a seam now. Now before, if we were just using a regular fabric, we would put our pieces together right side to right side, we'd pin it, we'd take our machine and sew it. But unfortunately, we can't really do that with plaid or stripes. We can't really hope for the best. So what you're gonna do is, my pieces are still right side to right side. I'm gonna just take this top one for now. We'll remove this bottom layer. So just this top seam here. And I'm gonna take the raw edge, I'm gonna fold it over the seam allowance. So in my case, it's 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna pin it. Just to hold everything into place. So then we know our seam line is gonna be right on that fold line right there. And you'll notice everything getting folded is getting kind of slanted. So we'll say, oh, I finished pinning it. So now I'm gonna bring back my original piece with my folded piece. And because this is folded 5 eighths of an inch, I now have to line it up with the 5 eighths inch line 
on the piece below. So I'm going to use my sewing gauge again to line that up. But this time I'm going to actually be looking at each line of my plaid here. So I'm going to lift it up. And you'll see it's off just a little bit, so I'm just going to adjust it. Slowly roll it down, making sure everything is lined up. Again, check to make sure it's at the 5 8 inch line. Let's move down a little bit. Okay, and then once it's in place, go ahead and pin through all layers. And then I would move to the next section. So this red line, again, lift it up, adjust it if you need to, slowly roll it back down, pin through all layers. Once this is all pinned into place, then we're going to do a stitch called a slip basting, and that's done by hand. And it's going to kind of hold everything together before we're able to sew it into place. Because sometimes when you sew it with your machine, sometimes the layers will kind of slide away from each other. So the basting stitch is just going to hold everything into place while we sew it and make sure that our stripes are going to stay exactly where they need to stay. So I have some needle and thread to start my slip basting. Basically you're just zigzagging between your folded edge of the top of your fabric and then the single layer on the bottom. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this folded edge here and then I'm going to grab a little bit of the bottom layer. You can make your stitches kind of big. It is a basting stitch after all. You know, you kind of get the impression that working with plaid definitely takes a lot more time than working with non-directional fabric. It's not something that can be done quickly. So now I'm grabbing the bottom and then I'm going to go back to the folded edge. So once I've done the whole area, this stitch basically takes the place of your straight pins. So once you finish, you can go ahead, remove your straight pins. You can take this lay it back so it's flat and then you can sew your 5 8 seam allowance at your machine. Now if you have a walking foot attachment to your machine I definitely recommend that because it has the feeder at the top so it'll kind of help also keep your fabric in place. I want to show you an example of a finished seam. This is the right side of my side seam. Now the side seam for this particular pattern angles in and then curves in a little bit the waistline. So it's not a perfectly straight seam line. And as you can see, my things kind of angle in towards each other. So that's what happens when you're doing a seam line that's not straight. But the main important part is making sure that you're checking your lines and they are connecting and they're not off. So if you've done that, then you've done a pretty good job in working with plaid. So we hope you've enjoyed these tips and you can use them for your next pattern in working with plaids of stripes. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.